Uh, hello, uh, my name is Jim Hammond. Uh, excuse the background. I'm right now the only place that I've got that's quiet is here in, in the museum. Um, I want to do my discussion over the uh, Carla Pestana's um, article, The Quaker is Myth and History. Uh, one of the things that's interesting to me whenever we're studying history is to look at um, not just what happened, but why it happened, and then the result of what happened in the subsequent years. What what ended up happening even now? What how do we see um, what happened back then? Kind of the the, the effects of that. So um, with, with these um, the what they call the, the Boston Martyrs, the um, Quakers. Uh, it happened 1659, 1660, 1661. So really a um, small amount of time uh, that these happened at. But what ends up happening as a result is the uh, Puritans and the Quakers both kind of redefine themselves of who they were before the executions. Um, and it, it's really interesting to look at. So the, the Puritans... Um, were very steadfast in their beliefs. I mean, pure religion is, is kind of how what they were. Of course, they, they um, I don't want to say pious, but in a way, yes, they were pious because they created religious laws that if you were didn't believe our laws, then you were a heretic. Um, it's, 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 it's really interesting. Um, and the Quakers, on the other hand, we see them today, um, we would consider them pacifist, peaceful, um, uh, people but that wasn't necessarily the case prior to the executions the quakers were very i guess in today's term we would say charismatic um, which is essentially how they ended up getting their name because um, uh, they would have the convulsions and, and um, would just speak out in the middle of church which is very different than the puritans but the puritans were very simple in the way that they um, went about church so the problem is the Puritans have their certain kind of strict policy. The Quakers are very um, charismatic in their uh, the, the way they do church. Well, then both denominations see each other as a mission field. It seems to me that the Puritans were a little bit more standoffish about going to the Quakers, but the Quakers, on the other hand, went everywhere. For instance, one of the interesting things that I found was that um, – in Barbados, the Quakers had a huge mission field there. And I thought that was interesting because in Barbados in the 1660s, 1670s, I mean, that's the golden age of piracy. And that's in the Caribbean. And so could you imagine what we think about as a Quaker being a missionary to an island full of pirates? Uh, I thought that was fascinating. But then, of course, as you study this, you realize that, well, maybe the, the Quakers weren't as pacifist as what we think they are now. Um, they, they were a little bit more outgoing prior to the executions. And the Puritans um, were really steadfast in their belief. Well, then what happens is, is you have these executions. Um, and the, the Puritans justify that by saying that the Quakers are not Christian. Um, they, they, their beliefs um, prove, the way they act in church proves that they are heretics. Um, and, of course, you, you look, look no further than, than uh, the uh, Anne Hutchison being, being banned from um, um, uh, the church. Um, and then Mary Dyer, um, one of the interesting things that I read about her was her miscarriages that she had um, and uh, how the Puritans saw that miscarriage. I mean, where she gets the name as being a monster um, is be because of that miscarriage. So they see the, the Puritans see the Quakers as, as these heretics um, uh, that are... Uh, charismatic and flamboyant they're, they're focused more on emotion than they are on actually scriptural um history and then that changes after um the execution so now the quakers they f realize they've got this kind of platform to talk on now the spotlight's on us because some of us have been executed this is the kind of people that we are real peaceful real quiet we don't we don't um uh push our beliefs on anybody else. Well, that wasn't the case to the Puritans prior to that. So you kind of see how it shifts a little bit. Well, then the Puritans use that to, to, to really argue their, um, their pureness of church, their, their strict ways. Um, and I think it's really fascinating. I guess in today's world, if we were looking at, at uh, um, uh, 
kind of comparison today, it would kind of be the same argument between the uh, cessationist and the continuationist on um, the uh, the uh, um, miraculous gifts. You, you kind of it seems like it would be that that kind of same argument. Of course, we don't kill each other over that now. There are some some very very um, um, outlandish arguments um, and, and some some you know very difficult. Um, um, articles about each one of them, but we're not going to execute each other. So it's kind of, I guess we're taking what we know today back then. And, and the other thing with the Puritans is, um, you know, it's been, and of course, all these articles write about this, how the Puritans escaped England to practice religious freedom, but then they kept other churches from practicing religious freedom. And their argument after the execution was the reason we are so steadfast on the way we believe is because we don't want our religion to be infiltrated or infected by these other beliefs that people have. So really, it's really kind of what I took away from this. Um, the, uh, the executions resulted in a change in the historical narrative of both groups. Religious intolerance became religious zeal, while aggressive mission work became pacifism. So you kind of see the change there. Thank you.